All right, this tutorial will take you through how to draw and put your Maltese cross, your first 3D drawing, just a basic simple one, in a minute. Step one is we open it up and we're going to do a new. And we're working and playing on an English part. So again, this is just basic first one we're going to do. I'm going to go to my tools, application options, and I'm going to go in here. I want to make sure grid lines has been selected to show. This is where snap to grid. Snap to grid is good sometimes, sometimes not so much. So as you're working, you're going to have to know where it's at to turn it on and off. You should also be able to right click as you're drawing, but sometimes I find it doesn't always do that. Okay, units in its degree, sketch, I want to make it 0 0.125, 0 0.125, I want my grid to be 1 and 1. What I'm doing is essentially I'm making a graph paper for us to draw on. Okay, and let's get started. We're going to create a 2D sketch. It automatically pulls up my different planes, so I have the X. Now Y, X, and your Z planes so that you can see your thickness. We're simply going to draw on that front plane. And the first thing I'm going to draw is I'm going to draw a basic rectangle. And I want this rectangle to be exactly 1.5. Now, constraint tools, when you watch the tutorial it showed you, constraint tools are right here and they're wonderful tools to learn. So if I go to constraint and I click this line, and this line, I want you to notice automatically change the box. Let me show you. I go equal tool. I like to use equal a lot because it comes in very handy and parallel. So that makes it nice and perfectly equal. So it's one and a half each way. Okay, next. Use my line tool. As we were working in AutoCAD, pay attention, look for your snaps. And here you're looking for the green dot. All right, now I'm going to move. I want to move all this and I click here for my next point from there to there because I want it centered perfectly right on the zero. So that's zero, zero, zero all around. All right. Next, I need to draw a line and I want the line to be exactly two off. Now I'm going to zoom in and zoom out. As you move your mouse wheel, you'll get used to it. This is how you're able to zoom in and zoom out. I'm not really worried about drawing it perfect because, again, I can use that general dimension tool and I can go change it when it needs to be because it needs to be two. And again, I'm not worried about it getting perfect. I can just use those different tools. I can also use my tools here. So you can do a lot of right click and use those different tools. All right, now I'm going to draw a line from here. Make sure you get that green dot when you start. Otherwise, it will not be connected and it will not work in a little bit. General dimension, point to point. There we go. And now I'm going to trim. Perfect. Okay, good. So it's one and a half to 105. Now I want to take these three lines and I don't want to have to repeat this process of doing it. I could, I could draw lines and dimension and do all that, but instead I'm going to use one of my pattern tools and I'm going to use the mirror pattern tool. Very similar to what we were working in AutoCAD. So I pick the three, then I pick my mirror line. I pick that, apply. Okay, good. Repeat the process. And this one just takes a little practice, but you'll get used to it. And once you do, it becomes your friend because it saves you from having to do other extra work. And now I'm done, and I'm going to do my zoom all. Yay! Next thing I want to do is I want to dimension it, and I want to make sure it's exactly four. And it's not going to let me because currently I have this one here. So I'm going to right click on it and escape. Okay, let's try right click. There it is, delete. Sometimes you have to right click on it more than once. Right click, delete, because I don't need them anymore. I just used them to construct it. So I'm going to delete them right now. And now I'm going to go dimension it. I'm going to do this on purpose to show you what happens. I'm change it to four. Oh, it changed the whole thing. Sometimes it'll make it throw it off. It'll throw it different ways where it gets moved around. If that happens, you can use different tools. So you can use your parallel tool where you force these two to stay parallel to each other. And that equal tool, I use the equal for the different sides. So you can use your different constraints. Like I said, I like the parallel. I find I use the parallel and perpendicular a lot, and I find I use the equal a lot. This one, it gets more useful and more in-depth things that we start drawing. But for right now, that works. Okay, excellent. Now, here to here. And perfect, it's four. And the reason it's four is because we told this in the beginning to be equal. When we set that off, that's why I did it that way. All right, now right click, 
delete because I no longer need these lines in the middle. So they were only needed for us to construct this to this point. Okay, excellent, good. Now I want to offset this. So the same thing as like an AutoCAD offset, click on it. If it doesn't highlight red, you didn't use the constraints and you didn't make sure your lines were going out the correct way. That's the only reason why. Dimension 0.125. I remember I'm taking all this from the PowerPoint. This is where I'm getting the information. You have written directions to follow too. Okay, this is perfect. This is exactly where I need it to be. And I'm going to click Finish Sketch. Again, just zoom all. All right, I'm going to make it 3D now. I'm going to click on the Extrude button. You have to be out of Sketch Mode to do this. And a lot of times you'll find that when you, this is, this is a very common problem that happens here. Students click on extrude and they can't find the different ones they're looking for because they can't read it by using this one. If you click right here, it brings the bigger one up so that you can actually see. So I want it to be one and I'm going to make it asymmetrical so it goes both directions and then I'm going to pick this. What it does, if you look, see, it puts an inch forward, an inch back, or an inch perfectly centered. So that's what I want. Okay. Save as and save it in your folder as Multis Cross. So do your save as, U drive, etc. Next, I'm going to go open. And I'm looking for, there it is, CHS title block. And this is what I'm going to use to place it in here. This is a very simplified title block that we're using for just what we're doing right now. I'm going to go in here and I've got it open and I'm going to click on base. And then I'm going to click right here and browse and I can go browse and go find the specific folder that I need. So in this case, I want the Maltese cross. So I'm going to go look until I find my Maltese cross. Where did I put my Maltese cross? That would be interesting. So I may have to go look for it a little bit. Baxter, yours being your use there. There we go. Maltese cross and click open. Here's where your scale changes. I'm going to leave that scale as it is because I should be able to put this over here. Keyword should. And place it here. And right click create. Now here's the problem is I'm looking at it, it's just too big. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this. And all you got to do is click on the box so it'll highlight and hit delete. Go back to your base and change your scale this time. So let's do a one to two. That's much better. Always, again, you could do a um, one to five if you wanted to. Ooh, way big. So you got to pay attention to what you're doing, okay? I could say one fifth, see? One third. One fourth. One two, that's fine. I'm going to place it here. Project one up. Project one over here. All right, click create. Okay, now it's here. Now we want to dimension it. You're going to dimension it to match the example given, but this is just like an AutoCAD. In AutoCAD, we went to annotate when we're ready to dimension. Well, I will repeat the process, annotate. And I just bring the line out and click OK. Oh goodness, that's not what that's supposed to be, is it? So I want to show you something. I'm going to go back into my Maltese cross. I double click here and I double click on the sketch to activate it. And this is supposed to be four. Yeah, that's what I figured it might do. See, it shortens one side and not the other. So I'm going to use my tools. I'm going to go to Parallel. Okay, good. That means it's already been set. Okay, so those have already been set. They're constrained to each other. They're going to be. So now, I did it again. Interesting. It's interesting when it does fun things. Let's 
that equal to that equal to that. Now let's see what happens when I set my constraints. There it goes. So your equal parallel those constraints are lovely and they're your friends. So now it's perfectly four. I finished my sketch and I save as and I save it to my folder and if I notice right here notice how it's automatically updated updated the dimensions because they're connected together it's automatically right there alright next all we need to do is we need to change the texture in the bottom now I want you to note here in the bottom the, how that it's automatically changed everything here at the bottom the only thing it hasn't changed is the scale and the reason why I did that is because when we set it up and we drew the Maltese cross we went into those eye properties and we set those summaries and what it does it should automatically link them and that's interesting why is it not showing because when I put the title here it should all show up but I saved that as the Maltese cross that one okay let's see save as okay I'll have to save it again so it's one of those lovely ones but it automatically links when you set it up correctly the only thing that's not is your scale I simply so you put a little family, right click, edit definition, and what did I do to pull it up? So I can double click here, and then I can go in here and change my scale. So my scale was a half, so it was a one to two. And technically, yes, you could double click here and change different things if you hadn't, but see, the scripts have been written so that it automatically inserts it for you. And then you finish your sketch just like if you were working in it in Inventor. And there you go. So here's your drawing. So what I want to do with this now is I'm going to do a file, save as, save is not ch title block but I'm going to call this one um, call it title block it's probably easier Maltese so that you know what it is and like we were working in AutoCAD export it as a PDF file same thing because that's easier for it to work or it's easier for Moodle to accept it see and there it is that's super hard you may find that you want to move this around a little bit because right now it's in plain old hidden wireframe. If you click on shaded, it'll change it up for you. So that's one of those another little, little tools. If you double click, it'll show my hidden lines. Double click. Don't show hidden lines. I'll darn your hide. There you go. So it just depends on how what you want it to look like as to which one you would use. But there you go. It's that simple. Like congratulations, you did the Maltese cross.